Thank you uh, and welcome to today's session focusing on high impact teaching strategies using mathematics and thank you for joining us. In the evolving field of mathematics education, our goal is to help you nurture uh, learners who are independent, capable and motivated to learn. This can be best achieved through evidence-based teaching strategies that are grounded in educational research, such as those proposed by John Hattie in his meta-analytic high impact teaching strategies, otherwise known as HITS. These strategies have consistently demonstrated effectiveness in enhancing student learning outcomes globally. Penelope Nadu uh, has 25 years of professional experience as a teacher in independent and public schools and was involved in the original content development when Mathletics was founded 16 years ago. Penny has now returned and has been working with Mathletics for the past few years to further develop and improve the program and incorporate explicit instruction and high impact teaching strategies into the learning pathways. So it's such a thrill to have her share with you today the design of the new courses in Mathletics alongside our existing activities courses uh, in a reflection to this commitment to evidence-based education. So without further ado, I'll hand over to you, Penny. Welcome and thank you for joining us this afternoon. So I'll be talking, as Anna said, about high impact teaching strategies using Mathletics, but I'll be starting with a bit of an overview on explicit instruction and um, before we get into how Mathletics, um, how you can use Mathletics using all these strategies. Um, research shows that explicit or direct teaching is effective in student learning and it's characterised by a series of scaffolds where students are guided through the learning process with some clear statements and their purpose for the rationale as to why they're learning these skills. Um, what is explicit teaching? Um, it's teacher driven and it consists of a set of principles that inform a range of dynamic teaching strategies. Um, involves teachers clearly explaining and modelling to students why they're learning something, what their learning goals are, how it connects to what they already know, what students are expected to do, how to do it, and what it looks like when they've succeeded. Um, what is explicit teaching from the student side? It's students being given the opportunity to show their understanding of what's been taught, ask questions to clarify and build understanding, practice using skills and knowledge that they have learnt and receive clear, timely and effective feedback. What does the evidence say? Um, the evidence says that explicit teaching works because it aligns with how students process, store and retrieve information. And when implemented effectively, it works for students across all grade groups and ability levels. And it doesn't preclude any other teaching strategies. I'll get to that in, in the next slide. Um, and it works across the K-12 to model for primary and secondary. It's very similar. So if I were to ask you any like these four questions, are you giving students context for their learning? Are you giving them a context for why they're learning this? Are you unpacking it step by step? So students say, OK, we get this. Are you checking in for understanding? Are you differentiating the learning for students according to their ability? The answer to these four questions is yes, then you're already doing explicit instruction. You know, at the heart, it's teacher driven. It's the, you know, I do, we do, you do. It breaks down what students need to learn into smaller learning outcomes and models each step. Now, explicit instruction is the umbrella. Um, if you talk to me about inquiry, it falls under explicit instruction. If you talk about experiential learning, it fits under explicit instruction. If you talk about developmental learning, it all fits under explicit instruction. Because for any learning activity to be effective, it has to be taught step by step. So you can have a learning experience. As long as you're working through that step by step, it becomes a more valuable learning experience. Now we've talked about the explicit instruction. Um, it's part of the high impact teaching strategies. 
There are a bank of 10 of these instructional practices that are recognised as reliable teaching strategies for delivering learning outcomes. You can see from that diagram there are 10 there, and I'll step through each of those 10 to show you how we've incorporated that into the content and the digital learning pathway in Mathletics. So we've grounded Mathletics in this research-based pedagogy of high-impact teaching strategies. Now, one of the strategies, strategy one, was structured lessons. It's a well-structured well sequence, and it's the same structure in each of the sets of 10 questions. And that same structure is it's 10 questions with five fluency, three reasoning, and two problem solving. And every question has a hint and a work solution, and each question set has a video. So students know exactly what to expect because it's structured in that way all the way through. The second strategy is setting goals. So these are screenshots from Mathletics that I have here. And if you can see on the initial screen, each question starts, each question set starts with a sample question and the learning intention and the success criteria. So this, prepare, this prepares students by providing them a clear expectation. They know what the goal is. They know where they need to be going. Strategy three is explicit teaching. So, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd teach the topic first in your classroom and then you'll set the content in mathematics for your students to do. But we've tried to incorporate some explicit teaching into the program with a video where it explicitly teaches the skills that the student needs to know to help them through that set of questions. Um, I'll give you, I'll play a little sample of the video. Representing unit fractions. Fractions are parts of a whole. The denominator of a fraction tells us the number of equal parts that make up the whole. In this fraction, the whole is divided into six equal parts. The numerator tells us how many parts are in the fraction. This fraction has one part out of six parts shaded. When we read a fraction, we say the numerator before the denominator. So, this fraction is one-sixth. Remember, a unit fraction represents one part of a whole and always has a one as its numerator. So, I won't show you the whole video here, but you um, get the gist of what these videos are. Um, the student can watch them independently or you could um, put these videos up on a whiteboard as well and step it through with the class. So I've given some examples here from primary because most of you who have joined us here today are from primary schools. But um, I'm also going to show you um, some examples from the high school math program as well. Um, for strategy four, worked examples. So every question comes with a hint and a worked solution or worked example. And they use a similar structure, um, helping the student plan, think or do so that they can use this work solution structure whenever they get to a question that they're having troubles with. Um, and here's an example from the secondary. I think it's from, looks like possibly year eight um, algebra. So here's the question. Sorry, this keeps sliding across. So here's a question. Um, at the top of the screen, the student can either click on information to help them answer the question or a video, which is different to the video that we just saw in that previous model. Um, so here's a you know stepped out um, helper for the student to be able to answer that question. And I won't play the video for this one, but there's also a video for them explaining how to um, answer that question. So that's just an example from the secondary console from Mathletics. Um, strategy five is collaborative learning. And I've seen teachers do this really well in the classroom using Mathletics, where um, 
they use some of the content from the problem solving and reasoning modules or challenges where they can project it up onto a whiteboard and um, form groups and task students with working out these problem solving sets in a group. So um, it, it's really effective. So you can use mathematics on a whiteboard. Um, I enjoy watching teachers do that um, for, for group work. Um, strategy six is multiple exposures. So in mathematics, especially in the new course, three cracks at getting each question correct. So if they provide an incorrect answer, um, they can review the correct answer on the screen before and a work solution before attempting an alternate version of that same question. So it's an alternate version of that same question served up and the kid has three chances of answering it correctly. This fosters a um, persistence in learning with high levels of success and gives the student confidence that, yes, they might have got it incorrect the first time, but we're going to give them hints, we'll show them a work solution, and they can have another go at it. Strategy seven is questioning. So the questions have all been carefully crafted and sequenced by a team of educators. Um, I mentioned before, they're sequenced in five fluency, they move on to three reasoning, and then go into the two problem solving questions. And that's by the time the student gets to those problem solving questions is where they develop the ability to interpret, model and investigate problems. Um, strategy eight is effective feedback, and this is where an online learning program like Mathletics really comes into its own, in that the feedback is immediate. Um, there's also visual feedback for the student if they get a correct question, if they get a question correct, there are sound effects, there's animations, and there's a variety of question types to maintain their interest, but there's instant feedback. So if they get the answer correct, they can see when it's right, they can see when they've made a mistake. They um, It enables them to learn from their mistake and correct any misconceptions and make real progress in their learning journey because the feedback is immediate. Strategy nine is the metacognitive strategies. And there are techniques embedded into the program to empower students giving them agency over their own learning. Students can visually track their progress through each question from one to 10. Each question set, I'm not sure how clearly you can see this on the screen, it looks a bit blurry for me. Um, each question set concludes with a summary, telling the student how they went, what their score was, which area they might need extra attention in, um, and at the very end of the question set, the students are asked to rate themselves on how well they understood the topic. They can pick an emoji um, if they're struggling, if they're doing well, if they think they need a little bit more help. And all of this contributes to students having an increased understanding of where they stand in their own learning. And that emoji will also go into the teacher grade book so that you can see um, how that student feels about their own learning journey through um, this set of questions. Number 10 out of the hits is differentiated learning. And this is where mathematics can really help with that because as a teacher, you have the ability to form groups. So you can create a group within your class and assign different grade level work to students. So in this example here, um, I've, I've gone in and screenshotted. So, you know, this student's in year seven, but I've put them in an extension group and I've chosen to give them year eight or grade, grade eight level content. So the student doesn't, so only you see these groups and in fact, what you've called them. So here I've happened to call that one extension. But there's also remedial where I could take a you know year eight student and give them some year seven work. And you can move students in and out of these groups as you see fit anytime 
during the year. And the beauty of this is students don't see that they are placed in different groups. They're just getting assigned content from mathematics, from, from whatever you have set for them. So you don't need to create groups, but it is a good feature of the program. And um, I know lots of schools do it. Um, and it's quite an effective way. And then, um, and you can move students in and out of these groups at any time. The other part of strategy 10 is the differentiated teaching. Um, this comes into the results reports. So it gives you as a teacher insights into how your students are doing in real time. So you could look at the data in the reports um, and it'll give you some detail. So where you know where you need to teach um, more effectively or in certain areas for that particular student or the class. So, you know, after teaching a topic in the classroom, you'd assign the matching content from mathematics to your class. And as they do the activities, either at home or in the classroom, you can see in real time their progress through it. I know this screenshot's a bit hard to see, but I'll go through the next slide where it's blown up a bit, where you can see the student progress quite clearly. So, you know, in this case, out of those 10 questions for that first student up here, I can see Andrew He's got through the first fluency questions OK, but he's struggling for reasoning and the problem solving section. Gives me an overview of how the class is doing as well. So at a glance, I could see, OK, Andrew's struggling a little bit with the problem solving. Maybe I need to focus a little bit more on that with Andrew. But the top area gives you an overview of how the class is going as a whole as well as individual students in that um, traffic light approach, the green, amber, red. Um, how does this all tie into the Mathletics program? There are a few content modules in the program. You've divided it into, the, into areas in the Student Centre, learn, revise and assess. And the learn is the, you know, the activities courses in Mathletics, which develops the fluency until they achieve mastery. The new courses takes it a little bit further, um, really encourages students to strive towards achievement and growth. And um, the worked solutions and the videos help them learn more independently. The challenges, which are the problem solving and reasoning content modules, they apply learning to the problem solving open-ended tasks, um, and that's more suited to the collaborative learning, which showed you earlier on in, in the slides. And um, the revised area is school quests, where they can further develop their fluency skills and it offers them opportunities to refine their mastery. And then there's assess, where as a teacher, you can set assessments and tests. Um, I've given a screenshot there from our website of all of our curriculum alignments. So Mathetics is aligned to the Australian curriculum, um, the latest Australian curriculum and the state based versions of either the Australian curriculum or your own state syllabus. Um, that's all available on our website, the correlation. And we also have scope and sequence guides as well. Um, for some states and um, for states that are implementing a new curriculum or syllabus next year, we have those documents as well. And also, if you are interested, we do have a white paper on high impact teaching strategies and mathletics and in particular how the new courses that which is the new content area in mathletics addresses this. So happy to send this out to you too, if you're interested. Thanks everyone. Thanks for giving us your time this afternoon.